I know. Uh, year of Le learning sponsors. Year of learning friends of Malaskotsky, Mordechai, Moshe Zelig ben Mordechai, Martin Lippman and family in memory of his wife, Malka Hannah Bad Pinchas. Friends of Herb Jeremiah Svi ben Zev. Friends of Sam Coleman, Shmuel ben Yaakov. Friends of Gideon Lazinski, Mordechai Shlomo ben Meir. Bella and David Adler in memory of her father, Eliyahu ben Yosef of Kohen. Those who were inspired by our Rebbets in Emerita, Sheila Shapiro, Sarah Esther Malka, but Mishlum Yisacha. Gail and Leslie Kaplan in memory of their parents, Mushka Shprinza, but Yosef Chaim Bechava, Hanan ben Moshe Eliezer Vechana, Pesha, but Shmo Yitzchak Kalevi Vitsipora, Yisra ben Yoel Moshe Akoin Bechana, Rexford friends of Gladys Sherman, Guta, but Meir, Michael Klein and friends of Judah Klein, Yehuda Tzvi ben Chaim, Marsha Braun in memory of her husband, Harav Yerachmiel ben Shmuel. A month of learning by Ruben and Susan Podolsky in memory of his father, Tzvi ben Pinchas. A week of learning by Ari and Judy and Cohen in memory of his mother, Fega bat Yechiel, and her mother, Hinda bat Moshe Zechariah Halevi. Michael and Sharon Glass in memory of his father, Yitzchak Tzvi ben Yechal Michal. Uh, today is the fifteenth, uh, right? There is no individual day of learning today. May the Neshama is having a Leah, Crank or a Fear of Elti Yashir Shem Atliya, and the Chobin Israel of Good Gabin Shia. All right. Okay. We're going to start. Uh, right. On Samach Bet, Damud Bet. Okay. Uh, right, about four lines from the bottom at the end of the line. Omar Abayi says, Abayi, okay, what is Abayi going to try to sell us here? He's continuing the discussion on what we talked about, the topic of Devar Shalom Bala Olam. Okay, that's what he's going to bring up and trying to show that there are a number of, of uh, Chachamim that accept that concept, okay, as opposed to others where the Gemara seems to question the concept, okay? So Amar by Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov is one, the Rebbe is two, the Rebbe Meir is three. Kuho sevira laho adam mekned devar shalo ba le'olam. All of them, I'm gonna translate makne here, is, is basically convey, transmit. In other words, they it's have a, business. okay? In other words, they accept the concept Okay, as a valid concept, okay, in that regard. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov had Amran, as we've said. In other words, we showed that he, he held that view. Okay, Rabbi, okay, how do we know about Rabbi? The Tanya, okay, we go to the next Amud Sam of Gimel today's stuff. Lo Taskir Evid al Adonam. When we're talking about a runaway slave, Okay, that one is not to return it to the owner. Okay, Rebbe Omer says, Rebbe, Bilokeach Evid Almanat the Shachraro Akatuv Medaber. According to Rebbe, that it is when one purchases a slave with the condition that they're going to free them. Now, since it's a runaway slave and he was it's not, not yet, slave. what? He's not a runaway. We'll see. see. He's standing in best. Well, uh, Okay. Not yet. In other words, he hasn't purchased the slave yet, in whatever the circumstances, yet he commits to free him in advance. So that's the Vashilo Bali Alam. Okay. The Pasuk deals with the topic of runaway slave. Okay. So what happens? Hey, Chidami, what's the situation? Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, he says. Okay, kagon de katav le lekshe ekachacha, hare atzmacha, kanui lechamech shav. Okay, it's like when he writes on the document of uh, acquisition, when I purchase you, okay, it will be as if you are acquiring yourself from this time. Okay, so that the point is, so that would give them to thought that Rebbe holds, okay, in that regard. Rabbi Meir, what about him? The Tanya. So what's his proof? As taught in the Brayta, Haomerli isha hareat mekudeshetli lachar she'et gayer. Okay, he's citing our Mishnah. Okay, that I will betroth you after I convert. Lachar she'tit gayri after you converts to the woman. Lachar she'eshtachrer after I free you. 
Lachasha Tish Tachrari after for you uh, as a fish, as a woman. Okay, thank you. Lachasha Yamud Balech after your husband dies. Lachasha Tamut Achotech after your sister dies. Lachasha Yachlotz Lach Yibamech after your brother-in-law performs chalitza with you. Einamikudesha. Okay. The bride this says, and under the, all those circumstances, she is not betrothed. Okay. Rabbi Meir says, Mikudesha, that she is betrothed. So he accepts this whole concept. All right. Now, again, Rabbi Yochanan has San Laromir. He says, Eina Mikudesha. In that case, he disagrees with Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi Omer, what does he say? Mikudeshet. He follows the same example as Rabbi Meir, which would again, since it says Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, it would seem that he clearly does accept, okay, accept the statement, right? But what happens? Okay, Umatam Amru Eina Mikudeshet. So what was the reason that they would say that at least in these two cases of the sister and the husband, death, that she would not be mikudeshit, not be betrothed, mishum eva, because there would be hatred involved in the situation. The husband or the okay. dying wife. Whatever. Okay, but the implication is there would be envy there. Okay? Now, what happens? So the Gemara says, v'nachshob, nami Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi, shall we include then Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi, in this list of Tanaim that uh, has uh, said as follows. Okay. Hainu Rebbe. That's, they're the same person. Okay. Hainu Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi. The same one as Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi. They're, they're one and the same person. So when we said Rebbe in the earlier list, so that's why we also replied, implied to Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi. Okay. All right. Let's go on. V'nachshov nami Rebbe Akiva. So let's consider, in other words, why didn't we, shouldn't we include Rebbe Akiva in this list of sages that accepted this concept? The Tanya, as we learn elsewhere in another Brayta, the following. Koneim she'ani oseh lefich. Okay, that a woman who is married to a certain man makes a vow to limit uh, his receiving any income from her handiwork. Okay. So that's the point. Ein tzarich lahafir, according to this writer. Okay, she, the husband does not have to nullify her vow of that, on that particular item. Of receive, okay, when she says, I make a vow that you're not going to receive any of my hand. Because okay. he, has, he has a right. We'll get, to, to, we'll get to it in a second. Okay, Rabbi Akiva Omer, yafir, Rabbi Akiva says, he should nullify her vow. Why? Because we've learned elsewhere that not, that not only does he have a right to that woman's handiwork, but that could very well be argued that the handiwork that he, the money that he receives is a, uh, in turn, what allows him to pay when she is uh, 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 ransomed, captured, things like that. Okay. So what happens? Shema ta'adif alav yater min Why? Because perhaps she will produce more than what he is really appropriately entitled to. That's what the Gemara wants us to know. Therefore, yes, we may okay. get that. So therefore, that's the issue. Ha'itma Allah. So what, what was said about this? Amar Rav Huna bereid the Rav Yoshua says as follows. Ba'omeret that my hands are consecrated to the ones who made them. And namely, any excess money really is not going to go to you. It's going to go to Gavoa. Okay. Okay. And since her hands are in, are in existence, and so to speak, in this world right now. Okay. That's the Raya that... It's not a Raya. Okay, well, the Raya is that she can make the vow, okay, and dedicate any excess handiwork to Gavoa. And that's the point that the Mishnah wants us to understand. Okay? So therefore, it could be possible that it, excess is forbidden to the husband. Okay? New Mishnah. 
matnitin haomer leisha, one who says to a woman, areyat mikudeshet li amanat she'edaber alayich v'shilton, that I, your betrothed unto me, on the condition that I speak to the ruling authorities. Ve'e'eseimach kepoel. And here the vav has to be understood as or, and not and, or that I will work for you like a laborer. Davar aleha, deber aleha leshul, deber aleha leshul tone. He spoke to uh, her. He spoke to the ruling authorities on her behalf. Ve'asa ima kepoel, or he worked on her behalf like a laborer. What happens? Mikudeshet ve'imlo ve'imlav ena mikudeshet. Okay, that uh, sh, right. If that's the case, she is betrothed. Otherwise, uh, she is not betrothed. Now, hold on a second, and we'll get to the Gemara in a second. Okay. Okay, so we're now about the middle of uh, 63A, where it starts off with the Gemara. Okay. All right, now, when we go into, as we go on, uh, Reish Lakish is going to make a strong point that regarding our Mishnah, okay, there are he has suggest, he has made the Mishnah make statements that the individual is going to be performing a certain act. Okay. However, the Mishnah does not say whether or not, as part of the kiddushin, okay, there is any exchange of monies. Yes, yes, okay, yes. that's what we're going to get to in a second. But what is so? What does Reish Lakish tell us? Okay, that the Kiddushin is not simply going to be based on the act, but there is an exchange of money from the suitor to the young lady. Okay, Amar Reish Lakish, he says as follows, V'hu shenatan la shava pruta. Okay, that he says that he has given this shava pruta in addition to whatever act whether it was speaking for the authorities or acting as a word laborer. So he's really saying this is not a new Mishnah. This is a continuation of the old Mishnah. And we're only dealing with Tanayim. Well, I don't know. I haven't found that yet. Okay. Okay. So what happens? So the Gemara has a problem. Are we saying here that any gift of okay, the money's what about the payment? Okay, the, in other words, he did an act. Okay, does she owe him money? Okay, if she gives him, okay, if there's money involved, can we really say that that isn't payment for the act? And if it's payment for the act, how can that be considered, okay, any kind of situation for a kiddushin? Okay, all right, hold on. Since his act has value, yeah, then that is her gift, and therefore they're married without any other money. Uh, hold on, we'll that's, see that. In a second. That's what okay, so that we'll see. Okay, so what happens? So that's the Gemara's question. Okay, isn't he get some sort of scar payment, value, uh, reward, things like that? For the act that he did, for the act that he did for her, okay, and therefore would that be considered the okay amount for the, the gift for the month for, for the kiddushin, okay, all right. So the Gemara now points out, Vahatanya, aren't we? Don't we have the following bright? Bischar shehikav tich al hachamor. For the uh, 
value. I'm going to translate schar here for value for the moment. That I uh, had you ride on this uh, donkey, shehoshavtich bekaron, or that I had you sit and ride in a wagon, obesfina, or on a boat, eina mikudeshet. Okay, she is not considered to be betrothed, right? Bischash ar arkivach al chamor for the value that I will, in other words, future, that I will have you ride on this, I'll give you a this ride on this donkey, okay? Or that I will give you, arrange for you to have a seat on this wagon or on this boat, mikudeshet, then she is to be considered betrothed, okay? Which would imply that the there is a valid, that this sachar, this value is valid for Kiddushin, and that would be a challenge to Reish Lakish. Okay? So what happens? Tema, and if you want to say, Hachanami B'diahav La Shave Puta, that in this case, in addition, he has given her, as Reish Lakish argued, a Shave Puta, V'habisachar Kama, but here we're talking about Schar, some reward, some value. Okay, situation. Va'od, and furthermore, Tanya, we learn elsewhere in another brighter, if when it says, Shav imi b'tzavta, sit with me as a companion, v'ekadeshlach, and I will betroth you. Okay, in other words, schok lefanai, a jest, tell jokes in front of me, rakod lefanai, Dance in front of me, okay? Asa kedimus hazeh. Make some sort of a building or statue or image like this, right? Samin, what we do is we must assess it, all right? Okay, in other words, find out what its value of what it is, right? Im yesh bo puta. If whatever of those items, that activities, are really worth a pruta, mikudeshet. Okay? Ve'im love, and if not, ina mikudeshet. She is not considered to be betrothed. Ve'chi tema, and if we're going to say, hachanami b'dahav la shava pruta. Okay, that in this case, again, with any of these kinds of activities, he has, okay, given money, v'hasamin otakama. But that's but here we specifically spell out that we must assess the value of these, let's call it services, these activities. That's what our Brighta says. Okay, to you to the Reish Lakish. This would then seem to be a proof text against Reish Lakish. All right. Who's doing it? She's doing she's dancing or no, he, 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 he's, he. he's dancing before her. Right. She mm -hmm. says to a comedian, do He's your probably, routine he, for me show. and I'll be your Okay. Yeah, in other words, way. whatever, in other words, the implication is if you, right, if you dance in front of me, tell yeah, jokes in front of me, work. provide me some sort of entertainment, entertainment benefit, etc. that how kind of thing. How, how much would she have to pay for that? And that is that value equivalent enough of a benefit to therefore be considered a, uh, the um, Kedushin, Shava Pruta to be considered Kedushin. And it, it's interesting that even though she makes this proposition, so you might uh, want to argue that whatever he does, she considers worth it. That's an interesting, but that I didn't... nonetheless, the Chachamim say, no, it has to objectively be worth it. Okay. All right. Okay. Did you find the place? No, uh, I'll find it, I'll find it. Yeah. Okay. Amalecha Reish Lakish. So Reish Lakish says, Hi, Tana Barasava. This is a, a statement. This brighter is from an outside Tana. It's not listed. In other words, it's not included in the general texts of brighter. All right, sifra, sifra, etc. Right? And what happens? Namely, Eina, 
Okay, so he's of the opinion, this particular Tana, that basically one does not get paid for their services till they complete the act. So we're going back to the mission. Okay, to the situation. Vitana didan sava, but our Tana, okay, in other words, the Tana who's brighter, we've seen that's connected with our Mishnah. Yeshna leschirut mitchila ba'ad sof. He's of the view that when one provides services, they get their salary or their money is paid on a, a, during the course of time, not from the start of the activity till the end. And it doesn't, and he doesn't wait to have to get paid till the very end of the activity. Okay. Umai duchke the reish lakish la the matnitin bi shana. Okay, Leschirut Mitchila Adso. And what was the reason, asks the Gemara, that Reish Lakish seems to be forced to interpret our Mishnah in such a way that it coincided with the view of the outside Tana, who said that payment doesn't come to the very end, Ubedahevla, and that he gave her also the Shava Pruta, in addition to doing whatever the act was, Amar Rava says Rava, Matnitin Kishite, our Mishnah was problematic for Reish Lakish. My Ilya, the Tane Almanat, why? Because it included specifically the issue of on a condition. Nitne Besacha, okay? So let them simply say, that it should be included the word sachar, that it should be as part of the value, the payment. Elishmamina ko almanat hechad yahiv lahu. But what it means is that we have to learn from this that whenever we see that the phrase almanat means that it was given in addition. In other words, that the money, okay, according to Reish Lakish, it means in addition to what. And this mission is simply an addendum to the previous. Right. It's not a chiddush that you can give value. Isn't that kedushin? Oh, that was kid. That's oh. harder to find. <laughs> all right, all right. Tomorrow. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay, so we're now on the bottom of uh, 63A, okay, the second Mishnah on the page, right? Okay, it's about four lines up from the bottom, okay? All right, I'm going to run a little longer. Matnitin, so our Mishnah teaches as follows. Abba, on the condition that Father let's say, is My willing, father. acknowledges, agrees, okay? Ratsa ha'av, if the ha father agrees, and we're talking here about the father of the girl no, first. No. Father of the boy. No, father, father of the girl. Father of the boy. No, father that's the boy. end part of the no, Mishnah. We're talking, he says to her, I'll marry you if my father agrees. If that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. I disagree. My father, my father, my father. Okay, says, yeah. I'm saying to you that's why the Gemara is going to ask, ask if it's two different look cases or one Rashi, case. Please, the first Rashi on Nishna. Look at the Rashi. Amanachi Yitzchak Abba Aviv Shel Chatan. That's father. That's what Rashi boy. explains. Well, Rashi is always correct if you don't have somebody disagreeing with him. Okay. Steinsaltz is not disagreeing. I'm it not saying it has to do with Steinsaltz. Well, then you have to translate it properly. Okay. I'm just telling you what the quick that that's why how the, the sheer that I listened to okay. presented well, it Rashi differently. Okay. Almanach Yitzha Abba, if the father is willing. Ratsahaav, if the fa and I'll tell you why afterwards. Ratsahaav, if the father is willing, Mikudeshan. The woman is is uh, betrothed. 
ve'im lav, and if not, e'na mekudeshet. She is not betrothed. Okay? So that's, all right, I'll come back to this way. Meta'av, if the father dies, harei zo mekudeshet. Then she is still considered to be betrothed. So we assume he would have a year. Okay. Gonna well, we're going to get that point in a second. Okay. So since when he dies, he certainly can't agree or disagree. Okay. <laughs> so the point is he's silent. Mate habain. If the son dies, that's the chasin. Okay. Yeah. That's the chasin. Well, his father. Otherwise, the no cases. You have, that's what the Gemara is going to argue, argue later, whether it's two cases or one case. Okay. Meit haben, if the son dies, all right, this is the milam din ha'av lomar she'eno rotze. Then they teach the father to indicate that he is not satisfied, does not want Okay. So that there's not a problem. So there's for no problem for, for a for for a for a, a guna. It's not his daughter. It's yeah. his almost it's daughter. It's not. It's that there's no problem of an a guna. Okay. All right. We'll get back. Gemara. Mai. So what do we mean? Amanachi yotze abba. When we say that the father agrees, ilema ad amar abba en. If we're going to say. That it's based on the father saying yes. Ema I would say, look at the middle part of our Mishnah. Okay? It says, Meta'av, when the father dies. Hare Zomikudesha, that she is to be considered betrothed. Vahalo Amar Ed, but he doesn't say yes. He doesn't say yes. Ella, rather. Okay? But we must understand it, that means, on the condition that the father is silent. But wait a second, says our Gemara. I would say, look at the end of our mission. There it says, Okay, that when if, if the, if the, right? If the son dies, who's the chasin, right? We teach the father to say that it's not acceptable, okay? And that therefore, therefore we're saying that because my, am I, why is that the reasoning, okay? In other words, we said, only interpreted the Mishnah that she doesn't become a, uh, um, right? A yabam. A yabam, right? So what? Uh, no, not doesn't become a yabam, all right? Right, so vahashatik, but he's silent here. On the condition that the father doesn't protest. Reisha bechad tama. It seems that the first part of our Mishnah is with one kind of reasoning, umitziata vesefa, and that the middle and the end bechad tama are in an, a, a different kind of another reason. Amar Rabbi Yanai, and yes, that's the status of our Mishnah. One thing is one, and the other part is some a different case. Amar Reish Lakish, says Reish Lakish, Shma Mina, the de Rabbi Yanai. Okay, we have to learn from this regarding Rabbi Yanai. Right? Right? De Chakinen Umokminen Matnitin Betray Tam. That he establishes Okay, and, and and maintains our Mishnah with two different lines of reason. Okay, dechad tana velo. Okay, but instead, but it's still the same guy. Okay, but it's but instead it's one. Okay, with one tana that he teaches velo mokminin betray tana, but he doesn't uh, mention it. He doesn't establish it. With regards to two conditions, right? Two situations. Okay. Everything you're actually supposed to refer to the son, the father of the son. That's correct. Yes. All the notes, everything. Is. But that, because Rashi, that's a Rashi. Because they base it on Rashi. Okay. Ubechad Tama. Okay. And with one reason. Rav Yosef Bar Amiyama, what does he say? 
Le'olam chad ta'ama. In all, it's one single flow, one single comma. Which means it has to be always five. <laughs> now it tells oh, us that. You can't do that. You can't miss intentionally misread it. I'm not it. misreading it. I'm presenting it the way I saw the Gemara and the way the she or I had presented it. Okay? All right? And he just ignores Rashi consistently. Didn't say he ignores Rashi. Okay? I'm saying the reason Rashi presents it that way at the outset is because now the Gemara later on comes back and presents it. That's the view. Okay? Because um, he's telling you how to learn the Gemara. Okay. Umai amanachi yitze abba. So what do we mean then when it says that the father is willing to accept it? Amanat shelo yimche abba mikan ba'ad shloshim yom. On the condition that the father doesn't protest from this point for 30 days. Okay. All right. We're going now to a different mission. Mat mitin. Says our mission. Kidashti et biti. The father says, I betrothed my daughter, but I don't remember or know for sure to whom I betrothed. Okay? So what happens? And along comes someone so and says, I'm the one that uh, the guy that you betrothed you to. I okay. You, I gave you the money. Okay, and is believed. Ze amar ani kedashtiya. What happens, however, says our Mishnah, if one comes along and says, "I was the one to whom she was betrothed." The ze amar ani kedashti, and this one says, "I was the one to whom she was betrothed." Shnehem not nim get. Okay, both of them should give her a get. Okay, to end up the betrothal, and therefore she could marry one or the other. Or anybody else. Or somebody else. The imratsu, but if they want, echad no tain get, ve echad kones. If they want, one of them can give the get, and the other can marry her. In these situations, she's a minor, so she can't marry anybody else. Here, the father is empowered to marry her without her involvement. So she has to be below 12 and a half. Okay. That's what has to be. Yeah, that the Gemara is going to spell that out later. But you don't need that. Okay. All, all we're simply saying the Gemara doesn't, the Mishnah doesn't tell us that. It's, it does. No, it doesn't. It says Can the I father marry is you my 30 year old daughter without talking to her. The father the, took money from a man, and now the he's mother, married. the Mishnah, sim the Mishnah simply says the father married her off, which means he has so to be a minor. Get to that, okay? Amar Rav says Rav as follows: Neeman litain get, according to Rav. Okay, it, he's trustworthy to give her a get. That's when it says means Neeman, right? But he is not uh, trustworthy to take her in marriage, to have her actually, right? He says that she's trustworthy to give her get. Why? Because why is he trustworthy to give again? Because a person doesn't commit a sin without some benefit. That he doesn't have some sense of gain with the ain ne'eman knows, okay, and he is not trustworthy to actually uh, perform uh, the full marriage with her. Ema yitzro tokfo. Why? Because it's possible then that his uh, yitzro would overcome. Okay. Now at this point, the Gemara wants to go on. Rav Asi Amar says Rav Asi af ne'eman knows. Rav Asi disagrees. And he says, no, he could be trustworthy also to take her into full marriage. Rav Asi, Nikdashti, Nikdashti. Okay. And Rav Asi okay, agrees that when the woman herself 
says, I have been betrothed, but I don't know for sure to whom I was betrothed. Okay, it was twin brothers, who knows? Okay, all right. And one comes and says, I betrothed her. Okay, they do not believe that he has not trustworthy to take her in man. Okay. Now, so because she can't be an A, whereas the father can. Right. Okay, we're, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Yes. Okay, we're That's not right. there yet. It's not. We have a Mishnah. Ratsu, our part of our Mishnah said, if they choose to, want to, echad notain get, ve echad kones. One can give a bill of divorce, and one can take her in actual marriage. To you, to the Rav. That would seem to be a proof text against what Rav said earlier, where he said, Ne'eman litain get ve'ein ne'eman liknos. Okay? Amar lach Rav. Rav, however, would respond as follows. Shain. Shani, shani hati. That it's different now. Right? The kevan de'ika acher bahade. Okay? Irtute. Mirta, okay, because since there is another along with him, he's afraid to lie, right? Tanya Kevate de Rav Asi, and we have then a bright, according to Rav Asi, where it says, Kidashti et biti, ve'eni yodea lami kidashtia, I <coughs> betrothed my daughter. And I don't know for sure to whom I betrothed her. Okay. Uba echad ve'amar kidashtia. And one came along to say, I'm the guy. I was the one who betrothed her. I gave you money, etc. Afne eman knows. He is believed to take her in true marriage. Kansa. Okay. But what happens if he brought her in marriage. And along comes another guy, a second guy, okay? And he says, no, I'm the one that was betrothed. And you're right? living with my wife. Okay? <laughs> okay? Not, you can't have the second one, okay? Uh, uh, break, for, up the break up marriage. the marriage, destroy the, the marriage from the first one. Okay? So what happens? Aisha she'amra nikdashti. The woman who says I was betrothed. Ve'eni yodat lami nikdashti. And I don't know to whom I was betrothed. Uba acher, echad, I'm sorry. Va'amar ani kedashti, and one came and said, "I'm the one who betrothed her." Ain ne'eman liknos. Okay, he is not trustworthy to uh, take her fully in marriage. Mipnei shehi mechafa alav. Why? Because she might be shielding him, protecting him. She's embarrassed. Okay. All right. So what happens? So they ask the rabbi. Mahu Visko Al Yadon. Can we say that in this situation where we now understand that she was a Na'ara and that the father had permission to marry her off without her knowledge and things like that, and there was some act of uh, infidelity going on, which normally would be punishable since she's in Kiddushin? would be punishable by a very severe penalty. Okay, right? That would be the point. Okay. So in other words, that penalty would be stoning. Okay. But if she was a Na'ara and she was not betrothed, it's not, a, it's simply an act of Esau. Okay, and then he would have to marry her, right? Okay, so that's how we now understand Later, the Gemara going back. Okay, now what happens? Oh, yeah, don't. Rav Amar says, Rav, ain't so keen. Right? Ain't so clean. We do not stone. 
the Ravasi Amar is so clean. And Ravasi says, we do. And they're both consistent with their positions. With their positions, exactly. Rav Amar aims so clean. Rav says, we don't stone. Why? Ki himena rachmana la'av isura. Okay? Le'katla lo himena. That, ra, that according to the Torah, under those circumstances that she's an Ara, and the father married her off without her knowledge, okay? The Torah only allows him to indicate that she committed a Isur, all right? And therefore the fellow would have to marry. She would be forbidden to everybody else. Else, exactly, right? But it does not give the father's testimony in that situation if he was telling that it became known to him that there was an act because of infidelity. Okay. Well, that's true. Okay. All right. All right. So what happens? So there came. Kehemena Rachmana la'avli isura the katla lohimena. But his testimony, okay, in that situation is not strong enough for her to be committed to a death penalty. Okay. Right? So what happens? Rav Asi Amar Sokrim says, Rav Asi say, we do stone. No, I. Lekula milte himina rachmana la'av. That for the entire act, okay, the entire deed, the Torah has given him the authority to give testimony under those circumstances. Okay? Amar Rav Asi. Okay, says Rav Asi. Umodina, okay, and he acknowledges. But I would acknowledge. Right? But Omerit, but when she says, Nikdashti She'ain Sokrim, that she says, I'm the one, I was betrothed, and I don't remember who, etc. but we fooled around, anyway, that we don't uh, stone. We don't kill anybody. Va'amar Rav Asi, Hanish Ma'ata, Didi, okay, Marpasan Igre Hashna. Okay, my uh, learning of this situation literally shatters the roofs. It's almost implausible. Why? Uma b'makom sheimban liknos. We're in a situation where he comes to take her in full marriage. Kones, he does so. Amart so clean. That one says that one would stone, makom she'im ba liknos, in a situation where he would come to take her in full marriage, ain kones, but he does not, okay, take her in full marriage because they're not. He's not permitted. Ain no din she so clean. Shouldn't the law be that in that case he should, if they committed infidelity, that they should be stoned? Because we accept that she's married, but not to him. him. Therefore, it's Same adultery. Question. Okay, infidelity. Velohi, <clears throat> that's not the case. La'av himne rachman. Ledida lo himne. That the Torah allowed the testimony to be based on the father and not on her testimony. It's not given to her. V'rav chista amar. This is Rav chista. Echad ze ve echad ze. If one came and then another one came, each claiming that they had been the uh, suitor, the betrothed, and so clean. We do not stone. Va'azda Rav Chista letami. And Rav Chista followed his own line of reasoning. Da'amar Rav Chista says as follows. Beni ze it's a situation where he would say, I'd say, that my son is nine years old in a day. Or he might say, my daughter is three years old in one day. Okay, then in this situation, since they've reached that particular age where the rabbis considered sexual activity viable. Okay, we'll use that phrase. Okay, Ne'aman <clears throat> le'korban. Okay, 
if it was unintentional, the relations, okay, they would be required to bring a sacrifice. Okay. If the father says the kid's old enough, then the adult who violated that child would be required to bring a corbin, but would not receive the more right. The, more the father's more testimony money. is enough to say that the that the requirement is to bring a korban, right? Avalo le makot velo le onshi, okay? But not for Malchus, Malchus or, or other serious kind of punishment, we'll okay? Uh, no, I want to go over to the I top of the <laughs> next um Tanya kvate de Rav Chista, and a bride that teaches according to Rav Chista, banei ze ben yud gimel shana v'yom echad. My son is 13 and one day. Biti zo, but yud bet shana v'yom echad. My daughter is 12 years and one day. What happens? Ne'eman l'nedarim l'charamim l'hakdashot l'arachim avalo l'makot l'onshim. Okay? Then they are to be believed in regards to any kind of nedarim, any kind of vows, or any kind of charamim, any kind of setting something aside as cherem, uh, as hegdesh, ula hegdeshot, or other kinds of sanctifications, ula arachim, or to making values, vows, vows avalo the makot, but not in respect to punishments of malchus or in effect to other kinds of punishment. And we'll stop right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to get these out? Did anybody not receive a calendar? Another calendar. What? Hey, gentlemen, tomorrow's $20 day, remember? Yeah. Two with mustard and salad, bro. Two with mustard and salad. You only get those at the new restaurant. You have to give me $22. Thank you very much. Thanks. You have $22, everyone else. All right, I do the same, but the concept is this. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll take as many as you can. What? No, I was going to say, when more guys come. All right. The way you wanted to learn, the Mishnah does not work out because you don't have the parallel cases that you can say, the father did this, the father did that. It has to always be the boy's father. Otherwise, you can't read the Mishnah. I mean, you can't. Well, I will go back. Mishnah. I will go back and listen to the shear again. He must have said the boy's father. He can't make that basic mistake and still give a shear. Going straight to that age. Don't worry about it. Hang up with him. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Ra that's why I said later in right. Rashi, because the Gemara argues what are the means that there's one one rationale for the first part and one the second. It's got to be dealing with two different cases. They're not necessarily the whole thing. And I understand that Art School is going to present it all. We're going in order, but Rashi went ahead already. He knows. <laughs> that, that was all the point I was trying to make. That's all. Okay? That at the outset, it, it doesn't seem to touch. Whoa. 
Erwin, yeah. you see this young fellow that you sent me? You sent me in a WhatsApp, WhatsApp video, right? That, that's the guy who said. That's my nephew. You know? Oh, that's my that's nephew. nephew. Wow. People told no. People told me he's a tour guide also. Yes, it's they, my they, nephew. It's Karen's yeah. brother's younger son. Well, listen to him. He goes, I know it. Now. Goes, I got it before Shabbos, so that's yeah. why yesterday. Yeah. I sang more than I would normally. Yeah, no, that's that's. I my, him. You can tell him that. Yeah, I follow him in uh -huh. You got to press the, the on the picture. There was an arrow. Yeah. No, I know. I know. Oh, okay. We listened to it on okay. on Friday. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. why I did what I did yesterday. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to get to that. I did it Friday night too in the yeah. parking lot. Uh, it was, uh, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people run. No, I'm not. You know, they want to go home. <laughs> well, too bad. Uh, the video was shown yeah. at BRS. Oh yeah. BRS was so full that you would have thought it was first day Russia. Yeah. But see, I've got. My the, the part of Chalent yeah. is the family here in the states WhatsApp group. Then we have <laughs> no. Then I want yeah. you to see we have Israeli Chalent, which is the Israeli family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I have Minyan Sfardi Hadash. Yeah. That's the Sephardic uh, Minyan that I would go to during the week nights. Okay, you can see the number of. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. No, but I have accumulated over the years all these different groups. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, besides the family, I think that was. It seemed to imply that I wanted it down here. No, I, I understood. That's why I just wanted to point it out. Today's daf, uh, Mordecai, and you look at at the Gemara. We had a big argument about one of the Mishnayot, whether the, it talked totally about the father of the of the suitor, the father of the groom, mm -hmm. or whether it talked at first about the the father of the of the girl versus the father of the and then only at the end of the Mishnah, it talks about the father of the of the suitor of the male. Okay, as to how to read the Mishnah. Okay, okay because someone challenged me by saying, well, look at what Rashi said. And I said, the reason Rashi is the answer to the end 
is because he's giving you what the Gemara comes up with at the end. Yeah, exactly. But that's right. not what the, you know. Right, anyway, right, right. You look I, at I, I was going to say Rashi knew what the Gemara said, so he's helping you along. Very good. Richard. Very good. Listen, nobody tells the man about that because he—that's the time I'm here. Yeah. <laughs>